All right, for everybody just joining us, we're going to give this just a few moments for uh, our um, guests that are coming to view our webinar today can populate as we've opened the doors uh, to our auditorium for today. And uh, I'm also going to get us started over on Facebook. So if you guys will give me just a second to jump through those hoops as well. Uh, we are at our maximum capacity on our webinars, so um, some people may have to go watch over on the Facebook link. Where it'll sh so in case you're one of those that have gotten in today and uh, come to our future webinars and you can't get in, there should be a link that pops up to send you over to the Facebook feed uh, for that. So when we get full here. All right, uh, ATBA webinar. Unfortunately, it doesn't let you do this in advance. You got to do it once you start the webinar or it crashes. All right, so we've got the, the go live button and um, everybody can see our sponsors there and um, and that is our old sponsor sheet. So I'm not sure why it doesn't have our new one. So let me change that out. And we'll show the latest one. There we go. That's no. Nope. Well, I'll bring that back up at the end for we'll just get straight on into our advanced television broadcasting webinar. Uh, this is our first one for the season, and I'm Lee Miller, Executive Director of the Advanced Television Broadcasting Alliance, the Low Power Television Industry Association, and we'd like to welcome for our first one of the year, Mr. Brian Short. Welcome. Hello, how are you? And so, Brian, uh, we've had you on before. Um, somewhat, you were talking about the TV station role. We've got you with a new hat on, with a, with a new logo, new company this year and uh, we're gonna talk about today. And um, first off, uh, we see you a lot of times uh, with the Kansas City um, uh, on the sidelines or at the football stadium and taking pictures and uh, congratulations there. Uh, I, I'm sure they gave you uh, tickets to the Super Bowl, correct? <laughs> well, I'm not quite high enough up on the totem pole to make that happen. I run the Chiron down and distance machine for the Chiefs. So it's kind of one of those side gigs that you do for fun and uh right unfortunately i only do that at home and uh, so any away games including the super bowl i don't get to go to so oh well it was it was good for a try maybe we'll put that in the, your your chiron contract for next year right exactly, exactly. <laughs> so anyway uh you've got something uh it's old but it's new and uh, something you've kind of taken on in the last year since um uh, from Media Gateway, I believe used to be the name, and right. um, and uh, after his passing, um, uh, his sudden passing, what was that in 2019, I believe. That's right. Yeah. And um, and you have kind of taken on the role, and you have relaunched now. You've moved operations, and you've got something new going. So, give us a, an overview of um, what you're up to now. Sure. So. Um... As you mentioned, Jeff Lyle, who ran Media Gateway, and everybody in the industry probably knows or yes. has dealt with at one point or another, uh, did pass in, in 2019 very unexpectedly. Um, and um, so uh, I was asked to come in and kind of pick up the pieces and see if we could keep it going uh, for the customers that, uh, that were there. And I did, and we ran that for uh, about a year and a half. And, and uh, then some of the business partners said, mm, why don't you take over this business? And it's like, I'm not sure it's quite the way I would want it. It's not quite as profitable as I would want it to be. So, uh, uh, so you know, if I take over, then we'd have to do this and this. And so we came to some negotiations and said, okay, uh, makes more sense to launch a new company uh, and use some existing infrastructure. So uh, one of the challenges uh, on the site uh, in Little Rock is that, you know, it's it's got a lot of history, uh, but unfortunately, sometimes history uh, can kind of hold you back when you're in the technology realm. And so uh, it turned out to be easier to do new equipment, net new, uh, to be able to do things the, the way that I had done my TV station. So right. my, my experience in the TV station was everything is IP. 
all the ad inserts is IP, everything's on a computer. And it, it simplifies things so much uh, that instead of having to have this, you know, multi-thousand square foot, uh, 30,000 square foot building, uh, you're able to do the same kind of thing in about 10% of the space. Uh, as an example, one of the things we have that I really like, uh, you know, your average uh, satellite receiver is going to you know, take a rack unit and we'll give you one, uh, one transponder worth of signal. Uh, we use these eight channel uh, IRDs and they give you uh, eight different transponders all in one box. And it all comes out IP and it's got a built in cherry picker and just all kinds of fun stuff like that that we use uh, to simplify things so that we have a robust and redundant architecture that doesn't take up a lot of space. So let me, uh, before I go too deep into that, maybe I can uh, play the video to just give you the, the high level uh, vision of kind of what uh, TV Masters does for uh, small clients and uh, one of the biggest TV conglomerates in the U.S. that I can't name, but uh, you know who they are. You can figure that out probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we do work for all of them from small to large. Let me uh, see if I can manage to share this here. Um, one second. Oh, I don't have a share option, Lee. Well, I got it now. I got it. Okay. You think a technology guy could figure this kind of stuff well, out? Well, they didn't build Zoom for television. <laughs> All right, here we go. Running a TV station or a group of stations can be overwhelming. TV Masters takes on the hassle of acquisition, ad insertion, and monitoring so you can focus on sales and growing your broadcast business. Broadcast technology grows leaps and bounds every week, and it's easy to get left behind. We remove the need for expensive operational facilities by fully originating the signals from a single rack unit, all monitored remotely by our world class team. Our strategically located facilities are free of 5G interference and any potential large scale natural disasters. TV Masters provides big network capabilities with a smaller footprint by utilizing the latest technology to broadcast and stream multiple signals. Our world class team offers more than a century of combined professional industry experience and are always just an email or phone call away for your convenience. Count on the Masters to reliably deliver your signals to all points of your broadcast chain, meeting every FCC requirement and getting your commercials and content on air, on time, 24-7, 365, so you can rest easy. TV Masters, we make TV easy. And there's that big dish that we uh, watched you construct on Facebook. That's right. Yeah, that's my baby. Uh, and that's one of the, again, one of the things uh, when you're trying to build uh, an infrastructure that allows you to support you know, a large number of clients, you've got to do it wisely. And it's, it's the advantage of foresight, knowing that I am going to try to serve these clients that allowed me to say, instead of going out and try to build you know, a dish each time I have a new client, uh, build one dish and receive everything. And that has worked out really great. The ATCI folks are great. And uh, uh, it has been fantastic to just say, okay, what bird do you want? And boom, there it is. And so uh, very, very slick. And the other thing to notice there, uh, you know, we're located in Topeka, Kansas and people go, why in the world are you in the middle of a farm field in Topeka, Kansas? You know, that doesn't seem very intuitive for where you would put a teleport until you start thinking about the C-band repack that's going on and all of the interfering signals that are out there uh, from 5G to all the 3.9 wireless links and all the stuff that's out there. Um, we, are, uh, we are 10 miles away from the closest cell tower. And so we have very little issue with any RFI interference occurring in those frequencies. And that has been a blessing. Now, what will that look like in the future? Well, you know, uh, things mm -hmm. will change and adjust and we'll have to add filters, I'm sure. Uh, but uh, at this point, uh, we are very pleased with the way our RF horizon looks. It's very clean. So uh, that helps a lot and just keep things simple. I also have right. a, a PowerPoint deck that I can briefly go through. With okay, them. great. And uh, so you're your typical customer and, and go ahead and pull up that PowerPoint deck if you wish. And, uh, but your typical customer, you know, obviously you've got very, very large broadcasters, but, but I assume a smaller broadcasters that, that might have two or three stations could use your services as well. 
Yeah, that's exactly right. And that's what we want. You know, we're not trying to be all things to all people, but we do want to have, uh, you know, a whole array of services that we can offer. And so um, I kind of go through those here. Is that sharing okay? Actually, we've got your your uh, presentation side. In other words, uh, oh, okay. backwards. <laughs> all right. How about now? Hey, there we go. Cool. Yeah, so, uh, you know, we have the capability. We have dual redundant 10G, uh, 10 gig circuits here. Um, so we have the capability to go as big as anybody wants to. Uh, but one of the things, like I said, uh, of choosing the, some of the in existing infrastructure that I had with the TV station was to uh, make our costs more affordable and therefore be able to serve small guys and big guys both at the same time. Um, so, um, first thing that we kind of offer is just generally thinking about, um, signal acquisition. So there's the big dish. And of course I was lucky enough to find a rainbow one day and got a nice picture of uh, the big dish with the rainbow. People ask me, wow, that dish must be putting out a lot of power to make rainbows. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, so we can get any signal from any bird in, in the Western hemisphere. Uh, they're already all, uh, all the LMBs are already loaded up. That dish has uh, every bird up there, uh, KU, C-band, whatever you need. So that's handy. Uh, this is kind of what I was talking about as far as the, my favorite toys. Uh, this is one of those eight channel IRDs. Uh, so it kind of shows you that uh, all of these uh, eight different transponders, eight different tuners, uh, you know, you've seen that actually in some of the old uh, Cisco stuff, uh, even the Motorola, sometimes will have multiple tuners, but never could you ever use them uh, simultaneously. You could only pick one at a time. Uh, so now these, uh, again, technology marches forward. And these are some fantastic little boxes uh, that uh, we've been very happy with. Uh, I've got four of them now. And just think of that, you know, with four boxes, I can get 32 different transponder signals. That would have been, uh, you know, two or three racks worth of equipment to be able to do that in, in four boxes. So uh, that's the kind of thing, again, that we uh, allows us to give you know, big boy type infrastructure to the little guy. And so um, you can see here that, you know, you have a nice couple of screens that you can see all the different tuners showing their signal. We have excellent ebb nose off of that dish. We have very low bit error rates. Uh, everything is beautiful on these guys. So uh, we're very, very pleased with how that's gone so far. So do you, you also bring in signals via fiber or are they all by satellite? Oh, no, well, you know, and especially with C-band repack, that's an excellent question because we have a lot of people originating off of IP, uh, LTN and, and, and Encompass and lots of different companies. Uh, we have their equipment on site as well. We pretty much have a library of every network you can think of. And if we don't have it, we can get it in a day or two. So um, everything, you know, from CBS and Fox and NBC, uh, all the way down to small ones like a buzzer or uh, America's voice or uh, uh, jewelry TV, very popular uh, shop LC. Uh, we've done that for a lot of folks. Uh, one of our more recent clients, of course, is uh, you know, Mike Kraft out of uh, Springfield, uh, we just uh, brought on and, and we like uh, working with small guys like Mike, because uh, he's got a, I think he's got an analog, he's got an analog signal in Arkansas that we are helping, you know, to kind of give him the signal for so he doesn't have to focus on that origination part. And then he's focusing on getting that built into uh, a digital transmitter. And then he's going to need, you know, eight, nine, 10, 11 different networks. Uh, we also know all the network people. So sometimes we can act as a bridge uh, to, to get you some of the paid networks that you might wanna get. Um, so we do that as well. Um, but um, Mike has uh, got the one in Arkansas and he's got one in Springfield. So uh, that's what we kind of try to do is get our foot in the door with folks uh, by making it easy on them, making it affordable. And then it tends to, tends to take off from there and they say, oh, what else can you do? So we also do, add insertion. So, you know, some of the signals that you get are going to be, like I said, for paid networks like Shop LC, QVC, HSN, those kinds of things. But some of the, some, usually you can't fill all your channels with paid networks, unfortunately, that would be great. Uh, but, uh, you know, on my, my own TV station, TV 25 in Kansas City and Topeka, uh, we've got half. So six of the channels are paid insertion and six, we do our own ad insertion. So we give you the capability to do ad insertion. If, uh, 
If you are really into uh, having your own programming, we can do syndication. Uh, so if there are syndication programs you want to put in there as well, uh, we do that as well. Yeah, and that was one of my questions I had for later. You did not give up your uh, television station and your TV station work there, did you? That's right. You know, it was one With of those synergy, synergy things, right? I'm, I'm basically just doing everything that I was doing for TV 25 uh, for everybody else, you know, I, I had to build TV 25 from the from the ground up with a lot of help from uh, uh, some excellent vendors. Um, uh, and so those vendors kind of showed me the light of, of why to go digital. And that's kind of what this this TV Masters is doing for other folks is look at the simple way we can do things. Uh, and because I'm doing it for other folks, it's easy enough for me to do it for myself at TV 25. So I eat my own dog food, as it were. <laughs> well, and sometimes you've got to uh, pick up things uh, as a necessity to keep your, your other operations running. And so it's a, it, it's a good mix. So. Yeah, it really is. It really is. Um, so, you know, we use play servers and DVEO. Uh, so uh, each, one of the, each one of the boxes can actually do eight to, eight to 12 uh, playouts depending on uh, HD and a few things like that. Uh, we just picked up uh, origination. I'll talk about that in just a second. Uh, but uh, so again, uh, a very powerful box uh, that allows uh, you to use whatever logging programs you like. Uh, if you do it in Excel, that's fine. If you do it in wide orbit or, or OSI or AddEZ or whatever it is that works for you, we can import those logs automatically and um, and we have a team of master control guys that are just fantastic. They've basically used every platform from Rushworks to Masterplay to uh, Skylark to uh, Wide Orbit to anything you can imagine. They're familiar with all those platforms. But one of the challenges we had was, you know, we're using 20 different types of boxes. Let's try to get this down to a single source so that it's easier to train people, it's easier to manage, and easier to keep track of. So that's as we've transitioned to Pika, that's what we've done. Uh, we also offer statistical multiplexing. Uh, we have you know, talked many times about what a big fan I am, of course, of iGolgi. And we've got a, a bank of their uh, multiplexers that we uh, make available. Uh, if you have, uh, you know, some people just want a single signal. Uh, some people want the entire TV um, uh, MUX all put together with all the PSIP and program guide and all that information, they want it all and they want it sent directly to their transmitter. So we can do that as well. We've got the statistical multiplexing and the uh, transport delivery boxes uh, to be able to do that. So basically you end up with one box at your transmitter as long as you've got a you know fairly decent internet connection, 50 down, 25 up, then you don't have to worry about any of the other equipment. It's all housed here. And uh, you know, people always joke about tornadoes in Kansas, but that's one of the interesting things with all the natural disasters that are going on on the coasts, Miami being hit every year, Houston being hit frequently uh, with, with um, the big hurricanes and of course wildfires in California and earthquakes, where do you put something where it's safe? And you know, nowhere is completely safe, but fortunately uh, here in the Midwest, uh, the only kind of real big natural disaster we ever face is tornado, and they are very small in their path. So usually a uh, very low risk that at any given location, you'll actually see a tornado. So we feel pretty confident about our continuity plans. We've got backups just in case something happens. Uh, and like I said, fully redundant connectivity. Uh, we've got a uh, redundant satellite field uh, located in Kansas City as well if we need it. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's why... Uh, when I say we can serve the big boys, that's what they are really interested in, that that signal never goes dark, and then we can do that. And of course, we also offer real-time signal quality and content monitoring. So uh, the entire time we're watching uh, what's going on. So here's the dashboard that, that's on my desk uh, most of the day and for my, most of our master control operators. So you can see all the different signals that uh, we're monitoring there. Uh, we also uh, use some of the remote receivers of uh, Trip Erickson's uh, Rabbit Ears service uh, to be able to give us an uh, independent look. Uh, is the transmitter actually doing what it's supposed to do? And then we can quickly respond. Uh, of course, we you know watch our rack temperatures and all those kinds of things. And the facility also has some fun security stuff. We have security on all our, uh, our building doors, obviously, but we're on a 160-acre uh, uh, rural 
uh, basically a ranch, like you said, and uh, all of the entrances have monitors on the on the driveways, so we know when people come in and leave, and so it's a very secure. Uh, we don't want people, you know, coming in and, and messing around with stuff, and we like being out in the country. That that helps us with that as well. Yes, I'm coming to you from the uh, the, the deep east Texas uh, woods at the ranch, and yes, my, my gun is sighted in at the front gate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you you know, there's a lot of gun happy uh, conservatives, but you know, I'm a gun happy liberal, so there you know, there's, hey, there there's you all go. of that. <laughs> so um, yeah, my partner balances me out on the other side. So there you go. Uh, so we also, I'll, since I've been doing RF engineering. Since I was uh, old enough to sit up, I, I grew up, my dad was a Xena TV dealer on the side. He uh, grew up on a farm, but uh, to try to make ends meet on the farming stuff, he would uh, sell two-way radios and work on them and sell Xena TVs and work on those. So, you know, since the time I could sit up, I was on the workbench, uh, you know, putting my finger where it shouldn't be and finding out that those things bite if you get in the wrong <laughs> spot. Uh, so TV's kind of in my blood, a ham radio operator for many years since I was 18 and a long history of working in radio since I was 16. So we also offer some additional services, so RF engineering, uh, transmitter installation and service, uh, figuring out your network requirements to get the signal to you and making sure that we can get a, a consistent uh, ISP uh, delivery, uh, even with really bad ISPs. We have some good partners to uh, like VideoFlow uh, to help with that. We've worked with some just incredibly challenging uh, connections that were, you know, really no more than somebody's cable modem and not terribly uh, reliable on packet loss, and we're able to make it work. So some good stuff there. Uh, if you do want to have your own satellite uh, or STL dishes a lot uh, in your own facilities, uh, we can help with that. If uh, anybody's ever had to aim a satellite knows what a pain that can be. Uh, and it it's used hard to, to find be really good at it doing. about 25 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. And it's hard to find people that know what they're doing. I mean, you know, how many people can aim a C-band satellite dish right exactly. now? Exactly. It's a lost it, art. It really is. It really is. So we've got, you know, we've got a team of folks that can do that. Um, one of the side things that's nice for me is I'm also a private pilot. So it's very easy for me, even in times of, you know, this pandemic, where it's you know, pretty risky to travel. Uh, we don't have to take that risk. I can just uh, fly out to the closest little airport next to you and uh, and do that. So that gives us a little more capability uh, than having to rely on the commercial airlines. Uh, we also help pick, pick products. If you're trying to do, uh, you know, some of your uh, broadcast stuff with us and some with others, we can certainly help you with what we believe uh, it takes to make a successful uh, television station or even network. I'll talk about net network in just a second. And so we help with the design architecture and technical strategy on that. And again, uh, uh, even if you're not doing video delivery, we can monitor your RF signal for you and uh, act as a knock uh, or a, a place that you can have uh, com customer complaints come to us so that we can troubleshoot those for you. And you don't have to wake up at 3 a.m. because we've got people that are already there ready to do that. So like I mentioned, we also do network services. So we originate for BizTV, YouTube America, and Ringside Network, and um, a few others as well. Uh, so uh, we can help you with uh, getting that, uh, uh, that content acquisition from wherever it may be located on the web or FTP or wherever you're acquiring that. Uh, we store it for you, and then uh, we can play it out. We uh, allow you to uh, get that network out to you know, small, small folks um, that, uh, are inside our house. We can obviously just hand that over with a cable, uh, but we can also send that by RTP, SRT, or HLS uh, to any any type of uh, MVPD or low power station that might not be a client of ours. We can still get that delivered to them. So uh, we make that available for the, those services. Uh, we even send stuff up to uh, um, uh, Encompass to uh, do some uplinks uh, for some of those. And again, watching the signals because that's the trick, you know, get it going. And wouldn't it be nice if, you know, Lee, we just pick the right product and it always works, right? right? You can pick the very most expensive product and it's still not always going to work, unfortunately. You know, there's always going to be years in television, <laughs> nothing perfect. That's right. You've <laughs> always got to reboot, right? You got to reset something or there's always something. Internet goes down. So having someone watch that signal quality in real time 
is just super critical if you want to play real TV or if you want to be a big network. Uh, worst thing in the world is to having your affiliates calling you saying, why have you been dark for the last hour? Oh my God, you know, that's the end of the world. You know, you should have caught that, you know, 10 seconds in, you should have noticed something was, was done and by 30 seconds have it fixed ideally. And we even do traffic scheduling as run reporting uh, for some clients as well. So we're kind of soup to nuts, uh, 24 seven, 365. I've, as I mentioned, we'll answer the phone for your clients. We'll take emails, all that kind of stuff. And the key is to, to, to the Topeka transition for us was that we know there's a lot of new stuff coming. So, you know, you've got ATSC3 coming and, and everything that we're doing um, is kind of video centric right now, right? But there's a huge data component involved in ATSC3. And you just put a, a story up about that as well. And I hope that takes off because I think that's going to be an excellent uh, revenue um, bonus for you know, small operators I think there's a lot of opportunity there. And we're there to be able to have the data support, uh, no matter what you need, uh, video or, or data infrastructure to be able to support ATSC3 as that, as that grows and kind of uh, solidifies. Uh, some folks will be looking at 4K signals before too long, once ATSC3 come, comes along. So our broadcast chain has plenty of bandwidth to be able to do that as well. Uh, we can, uh, everything from the satellite all the way throughout the out the internet uh, 10 gig internet ports so uh, we can support 4k uh, we also help you if you're trying to uh, go over the top you know for instance uh, or, or do what you do to go directly to Facebook we have servers that uh, can can get you onto Facebook and Twitch and YouTube and Roku and uh, just give you a any chance you can to find eyeballs, no matter where they are, we don't care. Uh, you know, try to reach out to uh, new audiences to add to your revenue potential. That's what we want to help with. And even video on demand services. So if you have some, uh, say you produce a local news program or you sub some sort of local interest show, uh, it certainly is sad if that only happens once and nobody ever gets to see it again. So right. we, we give you ways to, to make those uh, libraries of content available to your viewers. And of course, over the top uh, with Apple TV, Android TV, Google TV, uh, we can help you do that too. So that's kind of, uh, you know, I talk pretty fast, so. Well, uh, and we have gotten down to it's 328 and 330 right. normally when we would uh, hit our question and answer time. So at this point in time, even if you're on Facebook, uh, you're welcome to ask questions there as well. And uh, just hit the Q&A section and, uh, or even the chat if you want, but just hit the Q&A se section there on the bottom of your Zoom panel on most of your devices. And uh, let's see if we can stump Brian today um, with the question. So if, um, if I wanted to start a network, uh, I assume you would be the guy I could talk to on that. Absolutely. So you, you've got to think about uh, who are you trying to get this network to, right? Uh, the um, play out is really a fairly simple proposition. The, the most difficult things are acquiring, acquiring the content uh, and licensing and all those fun things, uh, as well as getting your affiliates, right? So how do I get the affiliates? So uh, again, uh, our, our networking from a, uh, you know, uh, technical networking perspective, but also from a social networking perspective, we work with so many different uh, folks that, you know, you say, okay, I need to get some content here, or I need to find some affiliates. You know, I can help say, oh, here's here's 10 or 12 guys that I know that might have an open channel that they might be interested in, in letting you uh, start out with. So, you know, we, we do the networking on the electronic side, but also on the social side to help you grow your business. So yeah, we can make that happen. The play out is very straightforward. As you saw, it's a you know, play server and you you figure out the schedule. We give you the as runs to be able to build back uh, your, your uh, advertising clients. And, uh, and then the point to point delivery. So yeah, we do it all. Okay. Well, so far we haven't got any questions, but <laughs> you mentioned the story that was in a um, newsletter that went out yesterday. Um, and if you don't get our newsletter, be sure and go over to broadcastingalliance.org and sign up for that. That comes out weekly now. And uh, also you can see that story there in regards to what's happening here in the state of Texas. And it just happens that uh, Dr. Randy Wise, Josh Wise, and the Wise family with Art Multicasting have a TV station in Crockett, Texas. And that station has an ATSC 3.0 stack. 
and that they've been doing testing on for, for about the last year now. And um, they've also, they're part of the Microsoft initiative and a lot of other good things. Uh, so it's, it's pretty much a proven ground for ATSC 3.0 and low power television. Uh, our regulatory climate is stable at the moment. We don't know what that's going to look like uh, with the new uh, FCC administration. Uh, but for the first time in quite a while, LPTV is in a stable situation and we're gonna hope that continues. We don't see any reason why that will change, um, that we've been very blessed to uh, uh, have some stability for, it. I think it's been what, 10 years, 11 years. I don't think we've had this much stability ever uh, since maybe 1985 when we first started in this business. But um, anyway, we're gonna be watching that. Check out that story, uh, Rural Link Wireless, also a new member of the ATBA. And uh, Rural Link, uh, I went over and uh, actually helped them with the first two antennas uh, on their subscriber side, just to check it out to see how things were working. That will soon interface uh, with the ATSC 3.0 stack and uh, a great thing, a great business model. One of several business models out there that uh, low power television stations will be able to take advantage of. So Brian, you have gotten off very easy, um, which is, is very amazing with uh, the number of attendees. Usually somebody's gonna going to stump you, but it, it is a, a very straightforward business that uh, that you've got there. Uh, pretty much something for everybody there from the network side to the station side. And I wasn't aware of your engineering services either. So that was good to hear as well. So uh, I'm going to throw up our sponsor screen and see if I can make that work this time. And uh, no, that did. Yes, it did. So do we see TV masters on your screen there, Brian? Yep. All right. Okay. Very good. So those are our current uh, uh, large sponsors that are helping to sponsor our ATVA events. And uh, we're looking forward also to an ATVA event at NAB. We still do not have any details from NAB uh, for the October event in Las Vegas. Um, they're still trying to work those things out and whether we're going to have an event or not, but hopefully we'll be uh, there. Also the National Religious Broadcasters Convention, we should be there also in June and the Texas Association of Broadcasters uh, Convention in the first week of August in Texas, which is our largest statewide broadcasting broadcasters meeting. And uh, we hope to be there as well. Just to give you a, a quick update before I let everybody go for the day, uh, Brian, the ATBA um, board will be meeting soon and uh, we've got some board member slots available. So if, if you know somebody that would like to serve uh, on the ATBA board of directors and you can see those uh, by going to who's, who are current board members at broadcastingalliance.org, uh, and clicking the about and going down to the bottom of the page to see the leadership. And you can see we're currently serves on the board. We are a 501c6 um, organization, a trade organization for the low power television industry that is uh, uh, directed by a board of directors. Robert Folliard is our current board chair at with Gray Television. And, um, and we do have a question that has come in, Brian, so you didn't get off the hook that quick. And uh, a qu question coming from Facebook uh, from Ruben, if the signal is delivered by the internet, uh, do we have insertion ability on location? So you certainly can. Uh, you know, we, we support whatever you want to do uh, as far as uh, where you put your workflow together, and we can help you figure that out. Uh, we like to keep it uh, close and tight in, in one location uh, from a storage and reliability perspective. But if it makes more sense for your business model to have a local insertion out there and you want to put on an ad insertion box of some kind, we can absolutely do that. So we kind of do whatever you want us to do. You ask the question and we'll make it happen. That's one thing. And, you know, Lee, you and I were talking at the beginning, you know, 
uh, it's been a it's been a pretty devastating year for a lot of folks, uh, and and even the low power community. Not necessarily just because of COVID, but we've lost a lot of folks. Not only Jeff Lyle, but of course Mark Gavino and Elliot Block and and yes. uh, just a host of other other folks. And so uh, one of the things that you know that we, one of our missions is to try to keep uh, you know some of these low power stations that might have lost their uh, you know, their technical leader or their thought leader uh, to try to help those individuals. You know, of course, there's always the, the LPTV uh, email remailer, but we kind of think of ourselves as another resource for someone who's had to come in behind someone who's no longer with us uh, and try to pick up the technical pieces. If you got find yourself in that situation or know anybody that is, please send them to us. We, we want to help uh, we're low power TV owners. We know it's a community. We want to make the community stronger. We want to help anyone that's in that situation. We want to help uh, low power look as good as it can to as many viewers as it can. And so if you've got questions of any kind, please call on us. Uh, we can definitely help. All right. Well, appreciate you got one question and got that one answered well. So I uh, also wanted to say that um, you know, as the ATBA, we're always looking for people to join. That's very easy. So if you are a low power TV station or a allied service uh, organization, we'd love to have you as a part of the ATBA because we are all stronger together. And uh, you can join by going to our website, broadcastingalliance.org and, um, and take care of that right away. Um, and also, if you've got ideas for this weekly webinar, we'd love to hear them. Uh, we've got several suggestions of uh, sessions, or if you have an idea of a guest or someone else, or if you're a low-power TV station operator and you've got uh, some things you'd love to share with the audience on, on how you're working through the pandemic, we'll, we'll have a couple of those coming up as well. We'll also uh, hopefully soon get an update on what's going on in Crockett, Texas in regards to that ATSC 3.0 install. And if you've got something you're doing with the new technology as well, we would love to hear about it because I'm sure there's an LPTV operator somewhere that could use that information. So anyway, we thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Brian, for uh, coming on and being our first guest of the new year. And uh, we're off and rolling again for another session. Hopefully we can keep this going through, um, through May uh, for the next few weeks to, uh, to bring valuable information to the low power television industry. So, all right, I'm gonna hit the button and say bye to everyone and uh, be sure to pass the word and uh, let everybody know about the ATBA and the learning that can happen over here with our webinars. Thank you, Brian. Thanks, Lee. Thanks, everybody. Bye.